Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Frame Live. My name is Dottie Sammartine, and I'll be your host this afternoon. I have the pleasure of having Cisco Executive Corporate Chef Neil Dory on the show today. Hi, Chef Neil. How are you today? I'm great, Dottie, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Absolutely always a pleasure. You know, there's been so much going on. I mean, the past two years have just been one thing after another. And um, the, the latest seems to be that there is a shortage of staff. So we're going to just hop right in. And um, actually, you know what? I, I, I want to let our viewers kind of get to know you first. Oh. <laughs> just a little sneak peek because it's always interesting. I get the, the, um, the benefit of getting to chat with with all the guests ahead of time and stuff, but I always like to find out one thing about my guests that most people typically wouldn't know. Do you have something, Chef, that you could share with us that most people wouldn't know? Well, so you probably wonder why I'm so brown with an Irish accent, right? Uh, I, I'm still playing rugby at 59 years of age. I actually played uh, uh, two weeks ago, and then we had a training camp last weekend. Well, my goodness, no wonder you're able to stay so active. That's <laughs> awesome. That's great. Okay, so now with that being said, we're going to hop into, you know, one of the things that's challenging, not just in food, uh, food service and in bowling and entertainment centers, but just across the board, people are struggling still um, to get and to keep uh, workers so that they don't have to alter their hours or, or whatever. Let's talk a little bit about that from a food service standpoint and some of the things that you might be able to do if you're experiencing a shortage of staff. Well, so let's look at it. Uh, it's a, it, that really is the pandemic right now, staff shortage. And it's not just here. I was on a global meeting last Monday um, we we're talking to our counterparts in uh, Europe, South America and Canada, and it's exactly the same in all of those mm -hmm. countries. Uh, and and it, it comes across the board. Uh, it's not so much in back of the house, which is, you know, really, it's not, the shortages are still there, don't get me wrong, but it seems to be a little less than it is front of the house and employees. And a lot of it is to do with a lot of stipulations that we have due to COVID and the fact that they have to interface with customers that, uh, you know, it can be a little testy when they're told, well, look at New York, for existence, you have to be vaccinated or have a card to, to come in. Uh, and, and people get annoyed when they're told, uh, you know, some of their liberties are taken away. Uh, and, and that poor hostess or host or, uh, you know, waiter, waitress, you know, they, 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 they fall on that. Or even the people bringing them to, in your case, to the lanes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens is we kind of get fueled up at the front door versus, you, you know, getting them into an environment and relaxing them. People can get fueled up right at the front door. So that has stopped a lot. And then obviously the talk of the, the, the increased wages, et cetera, I think there's a lot of you know, people waiting to see exactly what that's all turning out. But we're finding a lot of people are still scared about COVID and they have elderly parents or they have young children. Uh, and so they're opting not to come back out to go to work, to take care of their families. So we've been put into this really crushing, you know, kind of stewing part of lack of labor and We've, we've had to change how we operate. And I do, Dottie, we were talking a little earlier. I do see it quite often that people have changed their hours of operation or shortened them, especially if you're in the suburbs. You might have been open till 10, maybe not doing very much business between 9.30 and 10, but that was your hours, 10 o'clock was your cutoff, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I don't know if people out there have watched that movie, Waiting, it's a comedy with Ryan Reynolds when they're ready to go and everybody's excited in the kitchen and they're all going, yay, counting the seconds down on the clock and then a the customer walks right in at 10 and they have to reboot and be ready to serve. 
Well, I think what's happening now is people are looking at their week in perspective and saying, okay, Monday to Thursday, we really don't do very much after 8.30. If we close at 8.30, we can save those couple of hours for Friday and Saturday. So it really has brought us back to the 70s and 80s, if you think about it, because a lot of restaurants were split shift then. You'd have lunch and then you close down for a few hours and reopen for dinner. And then as more people laid out and uh, the expectation to, was, was to be open longer, we kind of started opening up at 11 and running all the way through. Uh, and these are all, you know, I mean, it's really hard to staff a two meal period in a lot of restaurants right now. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, you know, um, this is also a good time when you're having, you know, uh, a challenge getting people to, to work. It's also a good time to take a look at your menu and look at the items and how labor intensive those items are to prepare. Um, anything regarding the menu that you think the viewers could be looking at now that would help with lack of staff? Well, absolutely. Uh, so the, the, the first thing you have to do is be realistic about what you have, what players you have. It's like playing football, basketball, anything else. You're going to change your game plan based on what you have that, you know, so you've really got to say, OK, these are my players. This is the core team. And then I might get a few people sporadically around it. So I have to develop myself around that core team and their capabilities. And you really should be looking at pre-washed produce, pre-cut produce. You don't need to be in that game. Is there a pre-made salsa if you're making your own salsa? Is there something that I can do speed scratch that can take half of the prep out and then I finish it myself? But if you're not, if you're not looking at that, what's going to happen is, I hate to put it this way, and it, it, it's really happening out there, the employees get jaded. The pressure is so immense right now. So if you've got to look at how can I depressurize the system for my employees so that they stay with me and they're quite happy moving along versus mm-hmm. me trying to do what I always do with less employees, which means twice as much work, twice as much pressure. So really, it, this is the case. The, do I buy pre-battered? Uh, do I do this? Do I not make a fresh French fry? Do I buy a, a frozen shoestring? Do I say I have to have a shoestring or am I open to a, a French fry that is stocked? more so say i was a shoestring person there's a shortage in that area do i move to a different like a 5a for something else i mean so i have to be able to pivot uh and and if i'm doing a core menu i have to carry some inventory a lot of people stop carrying inventory right now if you're not carrying if i'm doing hot dogs i am sure is going to have six or seven or eight cases of hot dogs in my freezer at all times in case a delivery does not show up in case there's a shortage. So you got to look at, if I'm going to do hot dogs, I got hot dogs, I got buns. Let me look at what easy toppings, but let me come up with a menu of a cool, couple of cool different style dogs and focus on dogs, fries, and maybe burgers and fountain drinks and stay in that lane until things get a little bit better. I mean, sure. do you need to make salads? Have you got, I mean, you're really... I tell everybody, look at your product mix. Be real. We're all... We all do this. We have a love of affair with a few items on the menu. And we always go, you know, I really like that item. I know it sells well. And uh, now, well, listen, a product mix does not lie. You pull it up. You look at the descending dollar report. And you go, okay, I sold 200 orders today. And my favorite item sold three. Well, guess what? That's that favorite it. item is out <laughs> Because you never, your staff, unless they're doing the same item all the time right now, mm-hmm. unless they're doing that same preparation all the time, it's going to not be done correct anyway, and then you're going to upset your customer. So true. And, you know, if they do that hot dog to the best of their ability with a really good mustard and a good bun, and they take care of everything, and it comes out correct, not average, but correct, then you're, you're hitting on all cylinders on an item. But the other item on that, Dottie, let's get right back to the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You have to cross train everybody that's working for you. So the person that works doing the shoes, for instance, okay, you should cross train them at least to do one or two things in the kitchen. Because everybody should be able to pitch in if they, you know, everybody's in. If there's a hole in the boat, 
Everybody's using the bucket. Yes. Nobody is standing out there watching. Everybody should be cross trained. Yes, for sure. You know, the other thing that we are seeing is, you know, when you can automate stuff, when you have the ability for customers to say, order from a, a kiosk or to order in the case of bowling and entertainment centers, order from the lanes where they are and not have to be in front of a, a staff member, you know, that kind of becomes an easier situation, especially if the customer well, you is- you have to ask you a question. Do you want that st staff member delivering your food or do you want them three lanes down still taking somebody else's order? I mean, really, We've got less people to work with, but we still have to deliver. So put, make them as delivery runners mm -hmm. and take out the order system by having QR codes at the lane where they click on. It brings up the menu, allows them to do it right away uh, and, and to put it in. So now it's, it's expedited everything. Everything just got moved up. And now the people that before were just moving around doing that, they can upsell on the uh, upsell on the drinks and they can uh, they can take care of running deliveries, almost like uh, Sonic. If you think about it, mm -hmm. you come up to Sonic, you put your order in, and then before you know it, somebody's there with it to give it to you. There's no other connection except yes. for a delivery. And you know, some of the scoring systems on the market has the ability from the scoring system, the console, oh, even, to yeah. place the order. So you don't even have to have that. And, and you know, of course, you've got the handheld options to order, but some of the systems on, you know, I know ours for sure, we have the ability to place the order from the lane. So that's something that viewers can also take a look at and see if that's a, an option and an opportunity to, re, you know, to fill that void of not having enough staff members. Well, so. I, 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 the sad thing about it is that the one thing that COVID has done is it is going to automatic uh, automate our game, period. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as absolutely. operators, as operators, we have to find a different way of doing business because this is not. We 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 talked about this one a year and a half ago. Uh, it hasn't gone away. We're still on needles. So I think it's going to change. Well, I know it in the restaurant industry itself, hotels, etc. It's changed it for life, and I'm sure in sporting venues, it's done exactly the same. Yeah, er, er, you know, when you can find the opportunity to be automated or when customers um, can go online and reserve their, their options or their, their menu choices, that's where they're wanting to go. They, you know, it, it reduces staff for you, certainly, but it's also the expectation of the customer these days as well. So I think it helps in both, both respects. You know, you, you, um, you had mentioned, uh, you know, planning ahead and, and being prepared and, you know, here we are, we're getting ready to tiptoe into October and holidays are just around the corner. And for many bowling and entertainment centers, this is the time where companies are coming out, families are coming out, they're wanting to have holiday parties and, uh, you know, that poses some challenges within itself. But, you know, do you have any uh, suggestions or tips for viewers when it comes to starting to prepare your holiday parties and your food options that you might offer for holiday parties? Well, I'm definitely, so really we're still in the uh, to-go container world, right? We clip mm -hmm. it in and we bring it to them. They open it. So we've done our part by securely delivering the product to their table or kiosk or whatever. And then when they open it, it's theirs, right? Well, that's mm -hmm. not going to go away. And I think that's going to be a big part of the game along with to go curbside and family meals. So mm -hmm. what do you need for all of those things? You need napkins, you need capering packs, you need it stuff. And they are going, they are in short supply. And I guarantee you, they won't be any less short for the holidays. So if you have the option to add on to each of your deliveries coming into the holidays, I would. Mm -hmm. I would start, I would, I shouldn't say stockpile, but I would, say, okay, this is what I'm going to need. Because you've got Halloween coming up. That is right around the corner. I and mean, it's literally, what, 35 yeah. days away, 34 yeah. days away? And then we roll right into Thanksgiving and then into the holidays. So, and then the other thing is, start building your inventory on some of the items that you're going to be using during the holidays. If you have the space, don't let it go to waste because uh, they're already retailers. Uh, and I read this article in a, in a retail journal last week 
that retailers have been stockpiling dressing mixes and cranberry sauce and pumpkins and oh, stuff wow. since January. Oh my. This, since this, uh, because they all knew that there was going to be a shortage because, because let's face it, we don't have enough of internal logistics to deliver to everywhere across the country. It, it's, it goes from manufacturing, it goes to uh, retail, it goes to food service. There is just not enough of trucks and truck drivers out there. Nobody has inventory to work out of anymore. The inventory was depleted. And now the, that is what's putting an additional pressure is to be able to build it in. Think about the Port of LA has got 78 container ships in a row waiting to get in, waiting to get in because we don't have enough of people to unload the containers and not enough of tr trucks to take the containers out to where they get redistributed. So it's going to be, it's going to be tight. So we go back to what we had talked about earlier. It's fine tuning that menu, making that menu smaller, doing what your staff, because keeping the pressure off your staff is as important as anything, because you're not going to open the door if you don't have staff. That's right. And the beauty of your industry, thank God, is that you have the ability to hire high school kids, which seem to be immune to everything right now. And, and they still want pocket money. Yes. And especially if mom and dad are working from home and not, you know, there's not, there's not as much uh, uh, income out there to share out. So yeah. the good thing is yet you do have high school kids that are willing to work. But then you've also got to look at how do you develop or I mean, I, I mean, if you've got a sophisticated menu, you're already feeling this now. Uh, and on, honestly, uh, we had a conversation earlier, Dottie, when we were talking about it's OK to increase your price. Yes. If the quality is there and the perceived value. Uh, and I told Dottie, I go my favorite place to eat a hamburger is Five Guys. And I don't know if I should be advertising that, but it, I love it. They get the fresh French fries. It, it's a great burger. I get all my toppings on it. And it's made to order for me when I go there. So it's, it's all there. It's, it's got all the chefy things. They have gone up quite generously on their price since COVID. Uh, and I noticed it the first time because I go every week, so I know exactly what I was paying. And then all of a sudden it's whoops, so daisy, there it goes. So I had to look at my uh, check to see, did I buy a milkshake or something? How did it get so high? Yeah. Anyway, the diff I, 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 and I, I realized, because I'm in the industry, that the hat to supply chain, et cetera, everything is costing more, inflation is more, but they did not hold back on their delivery. It was the same great service, the same great smile, and I was content. Now, whereas I went to other places where they've upped the prices and the service has been horrendous. Literally, we ordered at 7.30, didn't get our food till 10. Oh, so that, that's, yeah, that's- Now, amazing. I understand. They only had two cooks in a full odd sports bar that night show up. Instead of them saying, hey, we've got two cooks. We're only going to do burgers, wings, and fries tonight. That's what it should have done. Something like that. Mm -hmm. They still offered the whole menu to everybody. And it was like one of those two for wing days. At that stage, the, uh, the general manager or whoever was in charge should have made a decision. I'm going to tell every table I'm short staffed. We're limiting the menu. And I asked them during COVID, don't you have your regular menu? And then a, Oh my God menu for when staff doesn't show up that you can drop in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. uh, listen, if I was operating right now, and truthfully, if I was operating today in these circumstances, I would have that extra menu for emergencies when from the house doesn't show up or I don't have enough of cooks to put out the stuff. Sure. Because if you've got 150 people in your restaurant seat, seated waiting for hamburgers, wings, all the other things, and then the poor people, not only was it that bad, they ran out of wings and, and had to tell everybody, so everybody had to redo, change their orders. They didn't have an alternative like a uh, nugget or something that they could throw in in between. Mm -hmm. And then to make it worse, they never got their delivery of CO2. So there was no draft beer. Oh my God. Well, it was a perfect storm for those people. It's yeah. A now storm. the cable TV went out and the, the football game. The cable TV, TV went out. Well it would have been even worse. But the bottom line was things are going to happen. So 
Yeah. And a lot of us are, are, are gun shy to carry inventory because of what happened with COVID. We had to shut down and mm -hmm. now we're stuck on inventory. It's, a lot of it's perishable, but it looks like we're going to go through the holidays. And if you have to have an extra two canisters of CO2, they're not going to go to waste. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to carry extra cases of some of your, your fast moving items in the freezer, just as a backup, uh, it's, it's definitely be prepared, be a good boy scout on this one or girl guide or scouts in general. That's, that's for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, you were talking about to make sure that you're delivering on the customer's expectations. And right now, provided you do deliver on those expectations or better yet, exceed their expectations, they are understanding when the prices have to go up. They themselves are faced with you know, electric bills going up and water bills going up. So they expect that. It's when you don't deliver or you reduce the size of your burger drastically that the price goes up. Those are things that, that uh, you know, become dissatisfiers. And to be quite honest, you know, you can lose customers that way. Very well, I to be quite honest, I typically mentioned this a little earlier. Uh, the most important thing to me right now is taking care of my existing customer base and not to be tried to be overly greedy and get more. That's different for you guys because you've got different people coming in. Mm -hmm. But you've got to take care of your core. If your core is the sporting teams from your town and everything else, that is who you need to take care of. Because, you know, it's like you said, if they get dissatisfied, then you've lost them. And you've I've technically lost them for a long time. Yeah, it's hard to get them back. It costs a lot more to get them back. Than no, it can't, it, oh, God, it, there's some sort of a thing out there. It's like three to four times the cost to get them back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. Is there anything right now that's trending or uh, is a hot item that we need to be looking at to add to our, our menu? Well, ethnic. So uh, ethnic and having different toppings for your pizza. So pizza is a pretty, a pretty easy item to do, right? I mean, you think about it, a lot of the you know, various different degrees of uh, difficulty throughout your operation. Uh, we were actually at the pizza show in Las Vegas, uh, really poorly attended. But what was really interesting was there was a lot of them with roasted vegetables on top. And this, to be quite honest with you, I'm shocked that a lot of high schoolers are opting for vegan, vegetarian, uh, keto. I mean, shockingly so, uh, the amount. And so offering, I mean, we had one pizza that was incredible. It was roasted cauliflower, uh, 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 golden raisins and olives, which was very Sicilian. Uh, and, and people were like loving it. And all these pizzerias were loving it because people are asking them for options, but they just couldn't get out of their zone, which happens to all of us. When you've got these on and running your operation, you really can't be creative outside. So, you right. know, really look at uh, offering them. Now, God, this, you might sell 100 pepperonis and... 150 uh, you know, regular cheese pizzas, and you might only sell 20 of these, but the bottom line was that's 20 pizzas you wouldn't have got, and no clue that's was true. already there. That's true, especially because we are seeing more and more you know, vegetarians come through, and, and they're, they're expecting to have options available. And when they so don't- what does, yeah, what does it cost you in your operation to have one bag of vegan cheese available? Exactly. So when somebody says, I want a cheese pizza, but I'm vegan, all you're doing is making the pizza with the sauce and putting the vegan cheese on it. Mm -hmm. Versus losing somebody and, and not having any offering. That brings you back to the 1980s. If you were a vegetarian at, at a function, you got broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots in the middle of a plate. Exactly. There was no thought put into it. And nowadays with social media and everything else, they can, it can get really mucky fast. So it's great to think some items. I mean, one box of cauliflower pizza crusts in your freezer, one box gives you the option to do what, 18 pizzas? Mm -hmm. Have them there just for that one customer. It's that one customer is probably the loudest customer you'll ever see in your operation. And it also gives them that feeling of, wow, you know, I'm, I, they, they listen to my needs. You know, that's important. They, customer wants to know they've been heard. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other big thing that we're seeing, I mean, uh, it, it's strange, but we're asked, getting a massive ask for halal chicken. Massive amounts. 
So yeah. because we have such a diverse uh, community now. So, yeah. you know, anytime you can think uh, of having an item in there available, it makes you the magician. Oh, yes, we can do that. I mean, oh, my God, you just made friends for life for the fact yeah. that you actually went out so, outside the box for them. And it is so easy. Talk to your sales consultants about it. Do you have a cauliflower pizza crust? Do you have a vegan cheese? Uh, and the, the funny thing about it is they last. The shelf life is much better than the, uh, the, the regular cheese. Oh, and yeah, yeah. So, that. yeah, for, yeah, well, I've, yeah, <laughs> just much better shelf life. So, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's not hurting you. All you're doing is, uh, you know, you get a group of 10 or 15 uh, high school kids in, you're going to have typically two to three different uh, needs within that group. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you want, you know, you don't want them to be the loud one that makes it miserable for everybody else to say, well, fine, we'll go somewhere else next time. And, uh, and you, you see feel yeah. like they're left out you know yes exactly experience to be the same for all of them in that group and not exactly just exactly so inclusivity is is really important to people yes I, no, I, and you know and it's not it, it, it's it's just having really having a strategy mm -hmm. it's just having a strategy and as you said this is a good opportunity to talk you know to talk and find out what customers are talking about and asking about and then Get with your get with your salespeople and and rely on them for their for their knowledge. Yeah, I'd rather roast off in my pizza deck oven or whatever oven I'm using or in pinger, just rub my uh, cauliflower with uh, oil and salt and pepper and whatever, and roast them through the impinger two or three times. Have them in a container on the pizza table as an option with maybe some olives and some other stuff for that person sure. that needs. You got the roasted peppers. You got some other items in there. It doesn't hurt you one head of cauliflower. If you throw it out at the end of the night, so what? But if you did two cauliflower pizzas for the night yeah. uh, and have, you know, happy customers. That I'm share that experience with others. Yes. So, well, Chef, you have just been a wealth of information as always, as always. It's always such a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, and, and thank you for taking the time out today to, to be our guest. Is there anything that you would like to leave our, our viewers with today? Any closing remarks? I think be prepared for the holidays. Uh, uh, it's, it's a situation where we don't even know if there's going to be enough of turkeys this year. I mean, it's just that, I mean, like we said, Dottie, I was at uh, HEB, which is our local uh, thing here. I've never in my life ever seen shelves so bare at 1230 on a Sunday than I did this past Sunday. And, you know, we're, we're talking stuff that you're all familiar with, Gatorades, et cetera. There's no Gatorade, the price of Gatorades through the ceiling, uh, no specialty waters. Uh, you go to the, and I hate to, my wife had me shopping for some cat food for the cat. There was no options. It was only the expensive ones left. All the 50 cent ones were gone. And yeah. I'm pretty cheap, so I was really upset. But the bottom line is, is just be prepared because when you see a store on a Sunday, which is usually after church, is a big, big shopping time, and they there's the, the shelves are already bare on a player like that, it just shows you that the products are not readily available or are coming out of manufacturing quick enough. That, that's, I, and I've experienced that same thing myself. So, well, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate you being our guest today. And viewers, I want to share with you on October the 14th, we have a very special guest coming on the show, uh, Jesse Cole. He is the founder of Fans First Entertainment, owner of the Savannah Bananas baseball team, author of Find Your Yellow Tux, how to be successful by standing out and keynote speaker. I guarantee you this will be a show you will not want to miss. So make plans for October the 14th. That is a Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. You'll get a little bit more of a sneak peek next week on Beyond the Frame about this, about the Savannah Bananas and Jesse. So start watching. You won't want to miss the show. 
Chef, thank you again for being here. Uh, aren't the Savannah guest. Bananas arch uh, rivals to the uh, Jacksonville uh, shrimp? I would not they, doubt They call that. the Jumbo Shrimp in Jacksonville. That's funny. Two, two different names there. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll have to ask Jesse about that. Absolutely. I will do that. Well, thanks again for being our guest. Viewers, I hope you all have a very prosperous week. From all of us at Beyond the Frame Live, have a great afternoon, everyone. See you next time.